This is from my good friend Bob Alexander, the uh, expatriate. Well, actually, he's not that. He's a citizen of a different country now, Canada. The title is, Can You Hear Me Now? Hey, Mike. Four years ago, my wife was able to ditch her flip phone when our next-door neighbor gave us his old smartphone, which was a Samsung Galaxy Ace 2X. Uh It was a giveaway because the smartphone was so old, its operating system couldn't be updated, so most of the apps didn't work anymore. It did do one thing, however. It would make phone calls. Last October, my wife bought a refurbished Samsung Galaxy Grand Prime for 60 Canadian dollars and gave me her old phone. It was my first smartphone. There are 12 computers in our house. Two are Macs, two run Windows, and the rest one run Linux. I'm the resident IT guy, and it's my job to keep them all running. But I was an idiot when it came to smartphones because I'd never used one before. After a couple of days, I had it completely figured out. Essentially, a smartphone is really a shitty computer that can make phone calls. In October, my son bought a used smartphone, and I inherited his old one a Google Nexus 5. My new old smartphone is a much better shitty computer that can make phone calls. But it's still an old smartphone. It came out in 2013 and its battery has been recharged so many times it couldn't hold a charge longer than a couple of hours. Time to replace the battery. Easy. Just slip off the back cover slide out the old battery, slide in the new, and back to watching kitty videos on YouTube, right? Wrong. The Google 5, or the Google Nexus 5 smartphone wasn't designed that way. You can't just open the back of the phone to replace the battery. You have to take it to a phone repair shop and pay 50 bucks to have the battery replaced. That's nuts. When did replacing a battery fall under the heading of repair? And another question arose, why couldn't I do that myself? Well, it turned out I could. After Googling around, I found a battery for the phone that came with installation tools for $16.99 plus shipping. I bought it. The so-called installation tools are actually burglary tools because you have to break into the phone to fix it. The Nexus 5 is not meant to be opened, so I had to slowly and carefully break it by gently prying the back of the phone off using one of the special tools that looked almost exactly like a guitar pick. I used the special teeny tiny screwdriver that came with the burglary toolkit to unscrew the itty bitty screws holding the components onto the phone's frame. These screws are so small, they're interdimensional. If you dropped one, you would never find it again because it would immediately disappear into a time-space vortex and possibly reappear on the writing desk in one of the first-class cabins on the Titanic. I took out the old battery, replaced it with the new, reassembled the phone's components, snapped the back cover on, plugged the USB cable in to charge the phone, and the phone wasn't charging. So, I took it all apart again and found that one of the battery connections wasn't seated properly. It would have been an easier fix if everything wasn't so incredibly goddamn small. I snapped the battery lead into place, hopefully, put the phone back together again, and this time saw the charging battery animation on the phone's screen. Success! Yay, me! Now the battery repair kit wasn't that much cheaper than taking the Nexus 5 to a phone repair shop, but I figured I'd be doing this again in the future. My Nexus 7 tablet also had to be broken into in order to replace its battery. While I was first breaking open the phone, I paused and thought, gee, the the only thing left for phone manufacturers to do to make it even harder would be if they actually glued the front and back of the phone together, which Samsung did. To replace the battery on my son's Galaxy A8, I would have to use a hairdryer to warm the edges of the phones until the glue softened, 
and then use my burglary tools to pry open the back of the phone. But don't get it too hot or you'll cook the phone. Electronics hate heat, you know. The simple truth about smartphones and tablets is they are not designed so we can easily replace their batteries or worn out or broken components. Smartphones and tablets are designed to be thrown away. I'm not just talking about the hardware. The phone's operating system and apps have their own use-by dates, and once they hit them, goodbye functionality. The operating system and app developers are professionally short-sighted and don't give a rat's ass about backwards compatibility. As a friend of mine said, quote, these iPhones are, I think, generally exasperating, end quote. Yes, they are. If they rolled out computers back in the late 80s, early 90s, in the same way they roll out smartphones today, everybody would be pissed off and the computer revolution that changed damn near everything wouldn't have happened. Let me explain. The laptop I'm using to write this came out exactly 10 years ago. Right now, this minute, today, it uses the most up-to-date operating system and software. My first smartphone hit the marketplace one year after my laptop, and its operating system hasn't been able to be updated since March 29th, 2012, nine years ago. Almost all of the apps I use didn't work on it because they needed to be updated, and they couldn't be updated because the operating system couldn't be updated. Which came first, the dead app or the dead operating system? Trick question. Smartphone manufacturers and Android developers don't care. Buy a new phone. Okay, what if the computers we rely on acted like smartphones? Imagine an accountant sitting down in front of her computer, clicking open an Excel spreadsheet. This happens tens of millions of times a day because all businesses everywhere use spreadsheets to keep track of everything. But on this day, out of the blue, Excel won't open. An error message pops up saying, in order to work, the program needs to be upgraded. But Excel's upgrade fails because the computer's operating system is too old. Okay, then, update the operating system. But that won't work either because the pop-up message on the monitor says the computer itself can't be upgraded to the more recent operating system. It's too old. Since many aspects of the entire operation are dependent upon being able to enter and retrieve data from spreadsheets, the company is now forced to junk their old machines and buy all new computer hardware in order to update the critical software. It's either that or grow out of business. Ah, but wait, we could go back to adding machines and typewriters, said nobody ever. The computer revolution in the late 80s, early 90s, happened because the hardware and software didn't evolve like smartphones and tablets. They were designed to last for years, not months. The business model of smartphones and tablets is they are designed to be thrown away after two years. To sum up, computers were primarily made for business and phones and tablets for mere people. When businesses have to replace and upgrade aging machines, it costs them money that they call tax deductions. When mere people have to throw away their devices and buy new ones, it makes companies lots of money, which is called profit. Heads they win, tails you lose. Capitalism makes me gag. I miss my old phone. There's an idea behind why it's like this, and it's not a good one. As I, and I told you that story so I could tell you another one. Coming soon... Part two, Vance Packard, who the hell is he? Regards, Bob. <laughs> See what I mean? Entirely different. All right, we will wait 
with abated breath for part two of this. But I know exactly what, uh, what Bob's, uh, um, well, complaining about here. Uh, smartphones and, uh, and tablets are just bullshit. I, I, I just hate them. But, uh, yeah, I get it. But the quote is, a nation built for shopping cannot possibly endure as a democracy, or for that matter, last at all. 